I got my skis all waxed, I'm ready to go. All I've been doing is praying for snow. My old ski boots all banner to shape, gonna grease them for the skiing in the morning. My old ski clothes that are laid away, gotta get them ready for that skiing day. Get out my goggles and my mittens too, gonna need them for the skiing in the morning. Benson was on the pro ski circuit for many years back in the day at Benson and Hedges. Yeah, see Lang Cup here, yeah. I got uh, Benson and Hedges Grand Prix. When I am up cup. on a mountain high, on a snow-covered peak way up in the sky, shuss them a little and avail for a while, I run them down the mountain in the morning. There'll be skiers there from everywhere, sun will be shining and the day will be fair. Get on the toe, we'll ride up there, we'll run them down the mountain in the morning. My skis all waxed and I'm ready to go. All I've been doing is a praying for snow. The old ski boots all bent out of shape. Gonna grease them for the skiing in the morning. My old ski clothes that are laid away. Gotta get them ready for that skiing day. Get out my goggles and my mittens too. Gonna need them for the skiing in the morning. I need them for the skiing in the morning. Need him for the skiing in the morning. I'm gonna need him for the skiing in the morning. second year that uh, Billy Kidd has joined us here, and uh, Billy, a uh, nice run up there today. Well, whenever you have a standing run in ski racing, that is a great race. But I borrowed this equipment uh, from my friend Richard Allen, and he said that I was going to, if not be the fastest racer, I was going to look the cutest on the way down. So how did I look, Richard? Looking great, Billy. You know, the style's half Richard, what kind of wax did you put on Billy's skis? Uh, we put on some Stein Erickson green snowman wax. So what does that mean? Is that, is that fast? It is very fast because both Richard and I have Stein Erickson sweaters on. Richard has a pair of Stein Erickson skis here. And so this is really uh, quite a delightful day. We had the first uh, vintage race last year here at Beaver Creek. It was outstanding. It was in honor of Jimmy Huga. And I think this year, again, we're remembering uh, Jimmy Huga, but also Buddy Warner from Steamboat, Spider Savage uh, from Aspen, uh, Rip McManus, just a lot of the racers that, uh, that made our sport great. Uh, the great ski racers of the past. Uh, Stein Erickson is uh, still with us and with us in memory today because of our sweaters here, Richard the Stein Erickson wax that you put on my skis. Uh, 
This is just a great event. This is really fun. Now, this is actually a real Stein Erickson sweater. Is that right? Did he yeah. wear this thing or what? No, but his, you know, he mom, designed what? his mom knit these. Yeah. So a lot of all the ski areas where he taught and stuff, the instructors would all have them and ask them and find them. So, like, you know, the other areas that he uh, taught at over the years. But, uh, these are iconic Norwegian style sweaters. And they're actually called Morius Erickson sweaters at this day. And his brother. So what do you think of this guy, Billy Kidd? He still has some competitive fire, doesn't he? And now every year, if I can just stay close. This time I'm happy. <laughs> I think he may have a Clifton this year. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out when the awards are. But I, know, I, I spent a whole day going through my entire inventory of 700 pairs of skis, just looking for one pair that I might be able to keep up with this time. And these are very similar to what Billy skied on the 64 games, maybe one year later. But uh, it's a great wood course and Kessley ski. How long has it been since you skied on those? I've never oh. skied on these. The oh. first run. <laughs> Couldn't you tell? <laughs> yeah, I could tell that was your first run on those skis. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was no, coming. These skis that Richard's on, these Kessley uh, slaloms, uh, Jimmy Huga and I used Kessley wooden slaloms in the 64 Olympics when we won our medals. These skis are almost exactly the same as the skis that Jimmy and I had. They were the best uh, slalom racing skis at that time. And in the 64 Olympics, that was the last year that we used uh, wooden skis and leather boots in the Olympics. And the release factor in the bindings was when the screws pulled out of the ski. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> that, that's scary. I know you wanted to make a comment about Moose. He is, he is looking so good these days. Well, Moose has lost about 100 pounds just so that he could squeeze into his old racing outfit. That's the racing outfit when Moose was on the uh, pro circuit. And uh, Moose was one of the fastest downhill racers in the world. In the 1968 Olympics, he almost beat Jean-Claude Keeley, except uh, uh, Moose had a slight miscalculation on the way down uh, and let Jean-Claude Keeley win all three of those gold medals. But Moose, on the way down, decided that he was going to invent a new competition in skiing called Freestyle Aerials. So right in the middle of the downhill at about 70 miles an hour, Moose went off a bump and did a one and three quarters backflip and about a three quarters twist. And that was the end of Moose's uh, downhill run in the 68 Olympics. It was spectacular and very memorable, wasn't it, Moose? Run over here. Man. I don't remember a thing. <laughs> did you? Did, did, did his teammates console him after that crash? Yeah. Come on over. Oh, no, no, we no. were we were really proud of Moose because he almost did a double back flip. Almost. They never even came to visit me in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't that make ABC's wide world of sports? It sure did. Which, which, was, like that. <laughs> which was that? Was yeah. that the crash that made wide world of sports? Yeah. Yeah, that that was the original agony of defeat. The original, the original <laughs> agony of defeat is here, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. The original agony of defeat. And, I, and my feet still hurt, but that's okay. <laughs> so, what do you have to say to to Billy about some of the comments he's made about you and your dad? That's what that's what people don't understand is that that Billy goes through all this, but there has probably never been an American that understood the essence of ski racing and a skiing turn to this guy right here. And so if you can ever get him on one-on-one -on -one and you need a little tune-up, this guy can do it in about 10 seconds better than any man on earth. And so that's why he's existed all these years and he still needs work. <laughs> well, Moose, Moose knows that my advice to him is if you're going to ski in slow motion, you better look good in the lift line. And so you got to be color coordinated. That's why Moose has got his fanciest outfit out here. For that. I think Moose looks great. Look at that outfit. Huh? This is the old Benson and Hedges Pro Tour. We don't even remember that. And I, you know, we were all sailing, selling every part of our body, just like NASCAR in those days. So we got Frontier and, and whatever else we could get on here, Dimitri. And, and you see, I'm holding my skis up. The Formidables, like uh, Gustavo Tony was racing. These are Spalding. Spalding doesn't even make skis anymore. But I love these skis. 38 years ago, and now I got back on them today, and they're, they're still exciting.
that's impressive. It's been 38 years since he skied on those skis. And he's making some beautiful turns out there. And Richard Allen has never skied on his. Do you think that's wise just to take a, never, you know, take a pair of skis out? You know, skied I, have a pair, I have a pair of 215 hearts that don't even have holes where this, the bindings were mounted on. They're brand new. But I'm not going to let Billy ski on because it's there. Those are really, really big. I was on hard skis for uh, 30 years. And uh, it, uh, Richard. He has a vintage uh, ski company that has uh, old skis, boots, outfits, all this stuff. And he had a pair of heart skis that he's loaned me uh, for this race here. But I think this is really so much fun for all of us. We saw Mike Brown, uh, Spencer Butts came all the way from uh, uh, Utah uh, over here. We had, uh, uh, we've got lots of uh, outstanding equipment and outfits. And this is just such a fun event because it reminds us of the colorful past that our sport has got. And, uh, you know, some of it, this equipment goes back to the 40s, 30s, 20s. Uh, but some of us know that ski racing history goes back to the 1850s, 60s, where they raced in the Sierras out in California. Uh, they raced on the weekends out there for... Uh, prize money up to a thousand dollars. That was a lot of money in the 1860s. Uh, skiing on a pair of skis that were 16 feet long with one leather strap straight down. Estimated speeds 90 miles an hour. Ski racing has got a pretty interesting history. But I think that what I know about uh, the ski history is that uh, ski racing history goes back at least 5,000 years. When the Egyptians were building the pyramids, Stein Erickson's great, 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 great grandfather was out in northern Scandinavia. Uh, he and his buddy were out hunting, and they found on a cave in northern Norway an etching that shows a skier that's been carbon dated to about 5,000 years ago. So I think the first race was Stein Erickson's great, great, multi great grandfather out hunting. One of them catches a rabbit. The other one says, Hey, I'll race you back to the cave. And the winner gets his picture on the wall. And that was the first ski race 5,000 years ago. Is that right, Richard? That's right, yeah. And actually, skiing has been dated back even as far as 9,000 years. Uh, and, found skis in old bogs in northern Europe and Scandinavia. In China now. In China, yeah. China may even be older. Uh, back 10, 12,000 years. So, what about the Atlantic? I thought you were going to say that picture on the cave wall looked like a moose. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> it did look, look at here is this. Here is this uh, this book that Richard has got. These are great. 9,000 years of uh, skiing. There's the cave drawing. That's the uh, that's the etching on the wall. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. A round of applause for these two great legends here, Richard Happy Allen, Day. Billy Kidd, Moose Perros. Thanks thank for your time. We appreciate it. With snow in the air and the wind in our faces, we're ready to answer the call from the north. In the heart of each skier's the end to be freer when winter calls all of the skiers come forth.